good evening, almost right. Thank you very much for, uh, for coming to our uh, first session of the Aula Mediterranea. Uh, this year, we, uh, this, uh, this session uh, co-organized by EMED and Master MIM is the first one of the whole program of uh, the, 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 co the conference series, Aula Mediterranea. And we have uh, this big pleasure to have, uh, to, to have here uh, our, our guest, uh, Dr. Ehab Galal, that I will introduce you uh, very soon. Um, I, would, I would like to, to thank you, uh, not only the Master Mimi students, but uh, other uh, people that are in, are in the audience as well. And I suppose we will enjoy a lot this, this conference because uh, this uh, subject of the, the role and the importance of the media in all the processes in the, in the region um, sometimes it's a bit, mm, uh, doesn't get the attention, the real attention that they could give, have in the, in the discourse in the society. So I would like to introduce you, uh, Dr. Rehab Galal. He's associate professor at the University of Copenhagen in the Department of Cross-Cultural and Regional Studies. His PhD was uh, about religious Arab media. And uh, his main research focus is about mediation of cultural, religious, political, and transnational identities, discourses, and publics by transnational Arab television. This is the general field that he, uh, made, he developed his uh, research focus. But of course, from these general ideas, he has a lot of publications, a lot of uh, research projects, uh, some of them funded by the Danish Council for Independent Research in, 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 their, in his country. So, and just to, to give you one example of the, the most important publications, he's the author of the book, uh, Arab Religious Audience. That is a very interesting uh, book, if you could consult in some moment. It, was very, it is very interesting. So I would like to thank you very much, Professor Galal, to have you here, to, that you uh, could accept our invitation. And he will give you the, this, uh, this conference that uh, has the title of Pan-Arab Media, Conflicts, Revolutions, and Politics. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, thank you, too. Uh, uh, first of all, I would really like to thank Professor Teresa and uh, Professor Rico, and uh, not least uh, 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 Elisa Peter. Uh, she, we, we have been mailing a lot together, and thank, thank you. Uh, all for inviting me, for giving me this opportunity to be here today. Uh, it's not first time I have been. I, yeah, it's first time I have been here in the university here, but it's not first time to be in Barcelona. I love this town. So, um, we, we, yeah, I'm going to talk in English as you can hear it, but actually English is not my mother tongue, and I've been living in Denmark for about 40 years. Danish is not my mother tongue. So the Danish accused me uh, to, to talk Arabic, and the Arab accused me that I talk Danish. So uh, when I'm in a conference, uh, the people say, are you talking Danish or Arabic now? But I say, I'm talking English. <laughs> so please, I'm, I'm, yeah, uh, I wrote my paper just to be sure that the young people are much better in English than the old one. So anyway, I'm going to talk slowly. And if you have any question, please just write it or say, hello, I don't understand anything from what you are saying. Can you repeat it? I'm, I'm used to it. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm meeting uh, students every day, and no one understands me than my wife. <laughs> so, so, so if you don't understand me, just stop me and ask, or just write it down and ask later. So you can see from my title here, media, conflicts, and politics. To explain this uh, relation uh, or the interaction between media, conflicts, and politics, uh, I will use the Arab media's cover of the Arab uprising. And I use the term uprising and not face book revolution and what, what we heard about uh, uh, many movements uh, and so on. So the Arab uprising got many different terms. I'm using today, uh, this evening, the term Arab uprising. I would like to, to, to use 
uh, uh, the Arab media's coverage of the Arab uprising and how it developed during and after the Arab uprising. Uh, first, I would like to introduce to you to uh, what I'm going to talk the next, was it 10 hours? <laughs> More or less. Okay. A bit. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I promised my wife to be home tomorrow evening, so I have time. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, what I'm going to talk about here, uh, first of all, um, my presentation proceeds as following. Um, I will elaborate on the theoretical approach to media and the political conflict and explore how we understand the changes of Arab media in this perspective. My second point, which I'm going to talk about, is uh, I, I'll present, explore, and illustrate uh, seven phases of the media coverage and analysis of different media's general approach to the new political <coughs> opponents, as it's written here. The third point, uh, I promised uh, to have two more. The third one, it is the strategies of the new rulers towards the media will be analyzed. The fourth one, it is conclusion. So uh, before, uh, 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 b before that, I would like to explain how I, I understand Arab media. What's Arab media for me? I do understand Arab media as something that reflects the changes. Arab media is not as something that creates changes. In my cases, uh, I il illustrate why I see Arab media uh, in from exactly this perspective. I mean, it is something uh, that reflects changes and don't create changes. Arab media landscape so, uh, is something that reflects the changes accused by division, oh, sorry, by division and uh, re, uh, recognition among the ruling elites. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No. Uh, rather than looking at media content as something that, uh, something to trigger political change. So in other words, just to make it uh, um, more simple, uh, I do understand Arab media as, as an instrument. So my, my understanding of Arab media as an instrument is in, inspired by three studies. Uh, first one, it's uh, William Rowe's study uh, on Arab press. I don't know how many of you uh, is familiar uh, with the book. It's a bit old, it's from 2004. Uh, but I think it's still uh, good to look about uh, uh, the system of the Arab press or the Arab media. So Rowe divides the Arab press, or I call it Arab media in four different systems. First one, it's a mobilization system. Second one, it's a, a loyalist system. The third one is diverse. And the fourth one, it is transitional, uh, transitional uh, system. I'm not going to talk uh, and explain a whole book for you, uh, but you can uh, guess uh, what this different terms means. So William Rowe, he divides uh, the Arab uh, countries. Uh, he talks about 18 different countries. He divides them according to four different systems. Uh, at the same time, he argues for that uh, a country can move from one system to another system. It depends on or following the country's political situation. I mean, we can see uh, he put Iraq in a system before 2003, but after 2003, he moved Iraq 
from a system to another system. We can, we can look to uh, Tunisia uh, before Ben Ali, uh, before 2011, for which system uh, the uh, Tunisian media was and which system the Tunisian media moved after the revolution. And it could be the opposite in other countries. For instance, Egypt, uh, as, as an example, it was in, in a system and moved as well to another system. So uh, the second study after William Rue, uh, I find a Gadi Wolfsfeld. Uh, Wolfsfeld argues in his book, uh, Media and Political Conflict, uh, it is not media that make political changes, but political power, political power uh, that changes media. The same meaning uh, I find using other words and the perspective is presented by Julie uh, Duce, Duce. No, I, I don't know how, how to pronounce it, but uh, Duce, she are, oh, sorry. How to go back, yeah. But uh, Duce, she argue, argues that TV uh, doesn't uh, represent the reality, but it represents a representation of the reality. I mean, we can be agree with her or not, but it's, uh, I think it's inspiring uh, for me uh, exactly this sentence. So TV doesn't represent the reality, but it represents a representation of the reality. So Wolfsfeld presents as well uh, what he defines as a political contest model a political contest model. Uh, the main argument is that competition between media has to be seen as an element of competition among political opponents. For what? For obtaining political control. So, his, along with Wolf's third argument, I will analyze the coverage of Arab media as reflecting the change in political control rather than as affecting the political change. It means that media is not as a political force in itself. Uh, even that uh, we have seen, we have seen it uh, being involved as a player in the Arab uprising. And I'm going to explain it a bit later with an example. So instead of explaining the Arab media as a political force, I'm trying to look at how the Arab media reflects the political forces behind to understand what was at stake in the political scene during the Arab uprising and after that. While the third study uh, I am drawing on is the book Satellite Reliefs by Naomi Sakr. Yeah, uh, you can say you love old books. Yes, I do. Uh, so uh, Naomi Sakr's book from 2001, uh, she discusses TV ownership relations to political power. Similar to Wolfsfeld, I find that uh, Naomi Sakr has argued that Arab transnational satellite channels, rather than being in, in an independent political force, are reflecting the political changes, conflicts, and reorganization of the ruling elites. The point is that it is the ruling elites, political and economical alliance, and prioritizations. I don't, I don't, I don't know how, how to pronounce it, uh, but I can write it. 
uh, that uh, in influence the form and orientation of the Arab media. To sim simplify my viewpoint, I will first talk about how Arab media tried to follow the new political situations <coughs> under the, uh, during the Arab uprising and later on. Uh, and then I uh, illustrate concrete examples on how uh, the Islamist and liberalist, or you can call it secularist political power, used the media to see if the media was uh, as revolutionary force or it was the revolution which was as a force to change media. Uh, the general argument of uh, the paper is the, that the national media of, of, the up, of the uprising in the Arab countries has gone through more or less the, uh, the same seven phases in their coverage. The seven phases are closely connected to the development of the uprising. When we look back to what happened uh, in the Arab uprising countries during, uh, during and after the Arab uprising, we see that uh, the uprising had challenged uh, the Arab national media traditional coverage. Even though media uh, institutions uh, in some Arab countries had gone through some degrees of li liber liberalization around 10 years uh, before the Arab uprising. But Arab media was not so much different from each other regarding its historical role as mobilizing their population for support the regimes. Thus, media had kept up a strong loyalty to the ruling power in each Arab country. However, my first question is, what to do with this loyalty when the, rule, the ruling power is first challenged, then shaken, and in the end, overthrown. My second question is, how does this process affect liberal ideas about journalistic standards of critical and objective coverage? Obviously, the Arab national media had gradually changed its covers in accordance with the national development of the revolutionary movement. I'm aware that uh, the argument may differ depending on if we are talking about coverage during a specific conflict, which is the case of this paper, or if we are talking about long-term changes. The basis of my analysis is the coverage of the television, primarily in news programs and debate programs. I will mainly present examples taken from Egyptian TV to support the argument of this paper. We have seen that through the period of national independence, Arab national media had uh, had uh, lo uh, loyalty promoted and supported the changing discourses. Therefore, uh, during the uprising, we saw that television had played the same, exactly the same role. It means uh, to be loyal, loyal to and support uh, the regimes. The television stations reacted uh, to uprising instead of launching the uprising. 
they reacted instead of launching. The country's political situation determ uh, determined how political players were using the TV to achieve political goals. I don't mean that uh, the television doesn't have any influence at all on the political situation, conflict, or the uprising. In the countries where, where demonstrations took place, the TV had been an active player in accelerating and enlarging the revolution's success or failure. Thus, uh, for instance, uh, while Al Jazeera TV had accelerated the event, the Egyptian, the, the Syrian, the Libyan, the Yemeni, the Bahraini TV had tried to minimize or turn around the influence and the effect of the demonstrations. Pan-Arab TV stations as Al Jazeera uh, and some others TV stations such as BBC and uh, CNN were often in their discussions taking on the role as lawyers for the demonstrators. Within their coverage, uh, in, uh, in, uh, intentionally, uh, inten in, intention, intentionally or not, uh, they presented facts which may have mobilized other players to participate in the dem demonstrations. In a way, they were playing a key role by offering a platform for communicating and promoting messages of the demonstrators during the uprising. So they, they offered a platform which the national television was very late in offering the demonstrators as I will demonstrate shortly. So consequently, the access to more pluralistic media has not started the protests. But giving room for communicating them to a wider audience within and outside the country, outside the nation. Uh, they have allowed millions of people all over the world to watch pictures, listen to, and participate in a narratives <coughs> from the Arab uprising. In other words, people have participated in the revolutions without their physically presence at the demonstrations. Where, where demonstrators risked their lives at uh, Borkeba Avenue in uh, Tunis, or Tahrir Square in uh, Cairo, or uh, Umayyad Mosque in uh, Damascus. Therefore, the competition and control over TV has been a major element of the Arab uprising. Let me now turn to uh, how this competition and control during the uprising resulted in specific media coverage. This is my seven faces. Uh, seven faces of TV coverage from, I call it from silent to old pattern. The first face, uh, I call it nothing face. <laughs> I'm going to talk about them later. Uh, the second one is the denial phase. The third one, acknowledge phase. The fourth, relatively positive. And the fifth, 
upside down phase. And then six, continuously choosing a coin. And the last one, it's you turn to the old pattern. I'm going to talk shortly about each one. Uh, the interaction between having control and being controlled within a political conflict is clearly demonstrated. When we explore the seven phases, the Arab national TV went through during the revolution or uprising. So the first one, it is the silence, or oh, oh, sorry, yeah, it is the silence or nothing uh, phase. The first phase of the TV coverage was characterized uh, by silencing the facts about what was going on. Nothing about the uprising was mentioned in the TV. First day, second day, and so on. Although in the same minutes at, at satellite channels like Al Jazeera, we could watch many demonstrators gathered in different towns in the same country which silenced the conflict. So here we can see, for instance, in, 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 in Cairo, uh, in different places, it's from Al Jazeera, not from the Egyptian uh, uh, national TV. It's the first phase. The second phase, uh, denial. The second phase of the coverage was characterized by the national television denying the fact that uprisings and demonstrations were going on. So we can see here, it's a, it's a picture from the Egyptian national TV. Um, yeah, I mean, Cairo, it's a crowd town. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's nothing uh, when she's calling her her boyfriend or, or, or whatever. Nothing happened in the town. On the contrary, uh, what was presented, we could only see peaceful streets without presence of any demonstrators or clashes. One could, one could, hear, one could hear TV presenters say that Nothing happens uh, in the streets. Uh, they are quiet today. An example was when the Egyptian TV presenter, a few days after the, uh, the first mass demonstration, called to different cities interviewing the local governors, for instance, uh, from Portside City, uh, uh, who said, here in Portside, Everything is peaceful. Nothing happens. This is Egypt. This is how Egyptians behave. Egyptians, Egyptians are quiet and peaceful people. At the same time, we can watch Al Jazeera. The Al Jazeera was streaming pictures from mass demonstrations uh, contradicting the claimed peace. The third uh, phase, it is acknowledging. So, I mean, so the national TV is pushed to acknowledge what's happening because the transnational media and with, with a, 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 how do you call it, a dish with 30 centimeters, you can almost uh, uh, receive what's, what's going on it doesn't matter where it is on, uh, on the world. So they had to acknowledge that, that something happened in, in Egypt. So the third phase, uh, the national TV admitted that something was going on, but 
rather than covering the politically legitimate claims of the demonstrators and their responses towards them from a critical perspective, the TV used three different strategies trying to weaken the opponents, I mean, the demonstrators. First, uh, the viewer, the uh, Arab audience, uh, were told that the number of demonstrators was very low. Secondly, uh, they were at the same time uh, di uh, discredited by presenting them as young troublemakers or uh, traitors who were bought by foreign powers to destroy Egypt. And the third uh, strategy they used, uh, they were uh, uh, pa uh, patron patronized and told to stop because now they have done enough. Uh, a funny example, an Egyptian businessman uh, called from Thailand. Uh, he, t he told uh, the Egyptian TV, uh, he, he told about local Egyptians being offered, I mean in Thailand, offered $200 by Al Jazeera English uh, TV channel to demonstrate in the front of the Egyptian embassy in Thailand. There are a lot of examples, but it's just one. Uh, the fourth uh, uh, phase, a relatively positive phase. The fourth phase was characterized by an acceptance of the political competition behind the demonstrations and the claims of the use as legitimate. Though uh, this acceptance didn't mean a full acceptance of the means or involved players. Again, a number of strategies were used by the news presenters. First, uh, the initiative and claims for reforms by the young activists were, 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 uh, were uh, prized. So they invited some young people in the TV and they were talking there what they did in Tahrir Square and so on. Se oh, sorry. Secondly, uh, at the same time, the demonstrators, they talk about the demonstrators right now, are presented as small and na naive children. Thirdly, uh, they must uh, be satisfied now since they have obtained their goals. Fourth, this deals to the message that it is now enough. Now you have got what you were asking for. They must go back to their schools and leave the rest to the older and the more experienced. A number of guests, experts, and youth are invited into the studio. The young participants confirm that they took part in the demonstrations uh, in the beginning. Uh, they, they all confirm that the changes are now going in the right direction and they agree on the view of the state and prize Mubarak. And we can see in this picture that uh, they, in, in Al Ahram, it is the biggest uh, Egyptian newspaper, uh, it's written, Millions of uh, people are outside to prize Mubarak. While uh, uh, dis uh, discrediting the demonstrators bought by foreign powers in order to destroy Egypt, 
what makes this face different from previous uh, other faces is also that two of the young activists that still find reasons to continue the struggle were invited into the studio. Although very late in the evening, uh, but their voices were presented. That's what makes different between this face and the other one because they had, in a way, two voices. The fifth uh, face, uh, which I call uh, doing a you turn. In, in the fifth phase, uh, the national television made a U turn. First, this U turn was made uh, uh, symbolically very clear at Egyptian national TV, where the faces suddenly were completely new. I mean, they changed the hosts. Uh, the news readers and the program hosts had been exchanged by new journalists. Second, the language changed as well as concepts like uh, revolution and revolutionary replaced the concept of uh, traitor, amil. So traitor, it was used in the first period and then, or, or in the first, uh, four faces and then change it to revolutionary and revolution. Third, the Egyptian state channel presented a correspondent broadcasting permanent from Tahrir Square. They didn't, do it, they didn't do it before. Fourth, a lot of interviews with the demonstrators were broadcasted and they were called the sons of the revolution. Awlad Athawra. Fifth strategy um, they used, young people supporting the revolution are invited into the studio to tell about their claims, expectations, and hopes after the uprising. The sixth phase, after the fall of the regimes, I mean Mubarak's uh, regime, a national television is caught in a situation where they are going to find out who of the political players are going to win the political competition. It's one of the picture, for instance, I mean, you have uh, uh, President Morsi in the middle, and uh, the big guys, two big guys in the military. So the TV trying to make a balance between uh, which one is going to win uh, the political power. They are caught between the traditional role of supporting the autocratic regime, which is still to some degree sticks to power, as we can see the generals are sitting up, up there, and at the same time trying to op oppose uh, the critic they got after the change of system in Egypt and Tunisia. Thus, in this phase, the television seemed to be trying to offer space for all kinds of different opinions. We could say that the state TV channels were not fully convinced of the winner. Therefore, they chose uh, to have a balanced strategy between the com competing powers. However, uh, there, there were limitations since the opinions are expected to be presented in a civilized manner and to talk within frameworks that may disagree with, but not directly reject the discourse of the ruling power. An example is from the second half of July 2011, when the new 
ruling power in Egypt accused the 6th of April movement for the movement which was standing by the uprising. So uh, the ruling power in Egypt accused the 6th of April movement for being traitors because they have been getting economic support from for foreign countries and they had been sending members for training in Serbia. The accusation came when the movement continued demonstrating, protesting, and standing by their claims, maintaining that they still hadn't obtained their goals. So by referring to the foreign influence, the movement's motives were uh, presented as suspicions in the TV. And this discourse was promoted further in debate programs where most were against financial support from abroad. How long time do I have? Ten minutes more or less. Hmm? About ten minutes more or less. Yeah. So, hmm? however, members of the movements and uh, uh, movement, uh, yeah, member of the movements were also invited uh, into the studio to discuss the accusation. But still, those who got most time to talk were those with the same agenda as the new ruling power. The ruling uh, power at that time, it was military council. Also, the same ar uh, argument was put forward in a Friday sermon transmitted two days after the head of the ruling military council raised the issue. So the topic was dom uh, dominate in the TV until the trail against Mubarak and the previous interior minister began and later on until Israeli flights killed an Egyptian officer and wanted two soldiers at the Egyptian-Israeli border on 18 August. These events made the Egyptians stand together about another subject, which they could agree about as crucial. The 6th of April movement has made use of this conflict to legitimate itself. Many members of the movement were demonstrating for a week uh, uh, in the front of the Israeli embassy, and the Egyptian TV has been uh, 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 preoccupied with these two topics, as though they had been among the demonstrators' main principles. On the other hand, one could analyze the TV reactions as an attempt of the ruling military council to move the opponent's attention away from criticizing their politics. The last phase is a U-turn to the old pattern. As you know, state-owned channels had been loyal to, to the Mubarak regime and continued to be so during the days of the uprising and until his fall. Regarding the private on TV channels, they have a secular profile and they are owned by successful Egyptian businessmen. They uphold a direct opposite strategy to any Islamic political influence. My conclusion, by tossing, by tossing the coin, the national media demonstrators, how it has taken one step forward while still being stuck in the mood of old patterns. Those 
are patterns that make the media looking for the, rule, the ruling power to define the political field. The question is, though, if the changes have made media open for more plural voices, uh, following the perspective of Wolfsford, this will first of all depend on how the political field in this country will come to look like in the coming years. If the political field is becoming more pluralistic, there is hope that the media will be as well. I don't know if I have it here. Yes. And thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Galal. I think this uh, conference uh, fits very, very well with uh, some of the last classes students are saying the master about the uh, media and communication field in the European side, in the southern Mediterranean side as well. We debate some, some uh, weeks some about the, the importance of the regulation and uh, specifically about the, the issue of the pluralism of, uh, of uh, voices, the pluralism of players but even the pluralism inside the media, each media, about pluralism of views and the perspectives in how to cover the, the facts. So uh, I, will, uh, I will give the, the word to the, the audience, but before, usually when we are in conference, the first question from the public is kind of bit, uh, people are waiting, and so I will avoid this. I will save to you this kind of uh, first uh, moment, and I will, I, will, I will launch this first question, and later I will open and to the floor, the, the, the questions. Um, in this perspective that you uh, present us, could we mm, make some differences uh, among the countries, the Arab countries, that dif some difference in this perspective that the, the, what could happen in the future, in the, in the, in the short term, with media and with the, this uh, plurality of media as well, or m m uh, most of them are in, are in the same situation considering the opening and uh, uh, new players or maybe new regulation as students, for instance. I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, actually, I asked exactly the same question. I've been in, uh, in Tunis, uh, talked with a colleague for a media uh, section, and asked him, uh, what's the difference? between uh, Ben Ali's fall and after. He said the only difference is we are more poor, but at the same time, we can say what we like. And for me to say what, what we like without being present. Uh, so, so I would say that Tunisian, uh, uh, they are different from others uh, uprising countries because they reach to talk about what they would like to talk and don't be present. And what, uh, in what extent some cha transnational channels such as Al Jazeera, but even uh, BBC in Arabic or these different uh, perspective counters could help or could um, is exert some influence to give more plurality to the Arab, Arab countries or to the Arab audience? Yeah, I think Al Jazeera tried to do it and we can uh, See, the conflict is more than three months now between Qatar and Saudi and Egypt and uh, Bahrain and Emirat. And uh, I, would, I would say that uh, the main reason is Al Jazeera. And uh, we can see it uh, here uh, uh, in this picture. And it's standing Al Jazeera as, as well. And uh, they are trying to close it. I mean, but, but at the same time, I mean, I mean they, yeah, they play, they play, they, they play our uh, role, yeah, they do. I mean, BBC Arabic and, uh, and Al Jazeera, and Al Arabiya, which I call Al Jazeera Light, uh, they do as well. Okay. Okay, questions, comments? We are expect, expect, uh, expecting your contributions, your co collaboration, your uh, opinions. Yeah, but I would like to say that uh, I think many 